Hello everyone, this is Caleb Simpson here from ZeldaDungeon.net, and you are watching my video walkthrough for The Legend of Zelda Phantom Hourglass for the Nintendo DS. We have just completed the Temple of Ice, and our next objective is to go back to the Temple of the Ocean King. However, we now have the Grappling Hook, which gives us access to a whole bunch of optional stuff, like tons and tons. So this entire video is going to be dedicated to optional collection-y things. So if you just want to continue on with the main quest, then skip ahead to the next video. Otherwise, you can hang out with my beautiful person, and I will collect a bunch of those things, including some things here on this island. In the Isle of Frost, there's a bunch of stuff on the Yuke side, which I will get in a moment, as well as several things in the Anuki Estates in particular, so we're going to head over to the Anuki side here in just a moment. Now that we've completed the Temple of Ice, the real Aru, not the Yuke one, but the real Anuki one, has been released. He was, like, captured in some kind of barrier or something like that, and now that you've completed the temple, then, uh, he's all free. So he thanks you for defeating the boss, so yay violence. So one of my big plans for this walkthrough is I was going to draw my map a bunch and just mark the locations of all the treasures, and I was doing really good for the big first part of the walkthrough, and then after a while I just forgot about it. And so then uh, I finally remembered again as I was leaving this dungeon, actually, and was like, oh yeah, <laughs> that was a thing I was supposed to do. Whoops. <laughs> I'm bad. All right, so now that we have the grappling hook, we can use these pegs here in the Great Ice Fields. So there's some right next to the temple, and then otherwise there's some to the far south of the Great Ice Fields. And you can use them to reach these upper walls. And the walls on the right lead to a bunch of chests. And the one on the very far top right is uh, that one you fall down, and then you have to continue falling down the rest of the way. So I recommend you get that chest last. So instead, I recommend you get the far southern one, then the far bottom right one, and then finally the upper right one. Here in a little bit I fall down on accident, but it's kind of okay. I was planning on jumping down at some point to show the southern pegs regardless, so it's fine. I'll just show it now. So if you do fall down or you start from this side, you can use the pegs to the far south, and that's another alternative way to get up here instead of using the pegs next to the, next to the temple. And I actually, in general, think these are superior anyways, because you want to start with the southern pegs because the uh, the far upper right chest is the last one you want to get because you have to fall down after that getting that one. So whatever you want to do there. One other weird comment to make about this area is the wall on the top left it has all these little platforms and stuff. It looks like it has some kind of purpose, but it doesn't. It's just there misleadingly. It looks almost like they were designing a puzzle or it was going to have some intended function, but they changed their mind or I don't know. I don't understand what the point is of it, but it, it looks very misleading to me. It looks like there's something there, but there really isn't. After gathering all the goodies, you can talk with the Yuke if you want to, and they have funny things to say now that they are no longer controlled by evil forces or whatever. So because you defeated the boss, then uh, good things happened here. So, yay violence. So there was a couple goodies you could have gotten here on the Isle of Frost before you ever entered the temple, but I just figured I'd wait until after the temple and do all the goodies at once. So one of those things is that you can dig below this sign here that labels it as Anuki Estates, and just below the sign you can dig there to find a big red rupee, which is worth 200, which is awesome. So you can continue on to the north, and there's a gossip stone in the top right little island that um, will tell you that if you draw a line between it and the Elder's House that you will find buried treasure, which is the clue for that particular rupee that I just got. So with that, you want to go ahead and grapple to the south, and there is a little spot here that's kind of suspicious, and you can dig that up to find a big gold rupee. This is the first one we found so far in the walkthrough, and these actually give you 300 rupees, which is amazing. So we just got 500 rupees for, like, very little work, which is awesome. Next, continue on to the far left and do the exact same thing. Dig here to find a treasure map. At this point, you can grapple to the north if you want. If you smack this gossip stone, it gives you a clue about how it says that the old wayfarer who is on Bannon Island has buried something in front of his house. Hmm. So if you dig there, you will find a map, and we'll go there a little bit later to do that. Next, swing over to the far bottom left corner of the map and continue on north, and along this upper wall, you can actually grapple to a chest there that leads to a wisdom gem. This last one's a little bit odd because you will only get this letter in the mail after you have changed the date on your console. So after completing the Temple of Ice, what I did is I actually went back into the temple, I saved and quit, and then changed the date, restarted my console, restarted Phantom Hourglass. So that's how I made this letter appear. Um, so you probably will not see this letter until later, um, but that's fine, so whatever. But I'm just, I'm showing it now in the walkthrough because this is the soonest time that it's available. I have this suspicious feeling that Jolene can sense my breathing. She can hear it from a mile away. So I'm just gonna hold my breath and be real still. Yeah. 
Nope. Mm -mm. We're gonna just go ahead and get past her and I actually managed it. Oh yeah, so I'm actually gonna head to Goron Island and one thing I learned from previously in this walkthrough was that when you go to a port and Jolene's chasing you like this, she's right outside the port when you leave. So, uh, but I actually have a plan for that because I learned from my previous mistake. So I will be able to deal with her adequately. So when we were here on Goron Island before, you may have noticed that there was a chest on an upper ledge that we couldn't reach. But now that we have the grappling hook, we can, yay! So the hook shot or the claw shot in uh, other Zelda games often can only hook onto like wood objects, whatever, things that it can grab onto that are like it can bite into kind of thing. Uh, but the grappling hook apparently doesn't work that way and there's no explanation for this, so it can hook onto other surfaces. So you wanna head over to this um, Goron here that we helped earlier with the yellow choo-choo problem and you want to look over to the far left and you'll see a rock which is grappleable, because that makes sense. And then you want to go ahead and open the chest to get a Courage Gem. Warning, angst detected. Activating Cyclone Slate. Threat averted, angst levels minimal. Next, swing on over to the Isle of Ember, and once again, now that we have the grappling hook, there are things that we can now reach. There's a little island in the top left corner of the map, and now that we have the grappling hook, we can reach it to find a chest containing a Courage Gem. Now, funnily enough, if you're one of those people who likes to break every rock you see, you might break that one into the bottom left, and then you won't be able to grapple back. But don't worry, you can also grapple to the torch on the right side. You just have to go all the long way around the island to get back to the boat. But otherwise, another way you could do that technically is to just save your game, and then when you load up your game, you'll be back at the beginning of the island and have the Courage Gem in your possession. So don't worry if that does happen to you. There's ways around it. Next, head on over to Melita Island, and we can enter the secret hideaway area, and there's actually two different entrances to that, it's all part of the same cave system, but you want to enter the cave behind Romanos' house, the first entrance, and then go up the little area right there in the middle above the water, and jump over to the right, and there's actually a, a uh, upper platform that we couldn't reach before, but now that we have the grappling hook, you can now grapple to that chest to get a power gem. So when you head to the north, there is a Zora warrior that we fought before. Now, the first time you defeated it, it opened the door. So now that the door is open, you can actually just run right past it. You don't actually have to fight this guy at all. Um, but if you want to, though, he does drop 20 rupees every time you defeat him. So it's it's easy, little bit of money real quick. Go ahead and stun it from behind with the boomerang. Unfortunately, the spirits don't really change too much. Like, you can kit it with the spirit of power to kill it in fewer hits because it has a lot of health. And that's cool and all. However, when you stun it, you have more than enough time to defeat it. So it doesn't really matter if you have the spirit of power equipped or not. I find that kind of sad, so the Spirit of Wisdom is still superior in this case because you take less damage from the fireballs that are kind of awkward to avoid while you're using the boomerang. So Spirit of Wisdom is just better in this case. Like, I sort of find that frustrating because a lot of enemies that you think in your head, oh yeah, this guy has a lot of health, I should use the Spirit of Power. It's actually better to use Wisdom, which is kind of weird. It seems counterintuitive to me. So power isn't as useful as you think it would be. So up ahead we have a puzzle that I think is super misleading. It's just really confusing. I think it's kind of illogical, but we have this barrel and you can grapple the barrels and it sucks you over, which is great. So they have this barrel across the way and it looks like you're supposed to grapple to it to get to the other side, but that's actually wrong. It is technically possible to grapple to it and get to the other side, but it's, you have to get the angle absolutely perfect. What they're wanting you to do is shoot it with an arrow to break the barrel and inside there's a chicken which you can grapple because that's exactly what you expected um, and that feels weird to me for multiple reasons like barrels in real life you shoot them with arrows and the arrows just pluck into them and stick out of them it doesn't break them and then chickens have you ever tried to grapple a chicken like i don't think that would work so good like a grappling hook what it is is a like a rope with a big old heavy piece of metal on it with with like sharp ends so it bites into whatever you throw it at like it's just, I don't know, it would kill the chicken. <laughs> it's a very heavy piece of iron. Also, the chicken just doesn't have enough mass. Like, the whole point is that in order to grapple onto something, the object needs to be heavier than the grappling hook. So you have this heavy piece of metal, and it needs to be able to, like, you throw the rope at it, like, swinging wide, and it swings around the chicken, and it wraps around it a couple times before it grabs on. That's why it has, that's why it has pull power. The friction is because it wrapped around it. So because the chicken isn't heavy enough for it to actually wrap around it, it wouldn't work that way. You could lasso it with, like, the whip from the sequel. That would make sense, maybe. But, um... Yeah, it just, it, it doesn't work with a grappling hook, I don't know, in real life anyways. So, uh, this is one of those points where, as my brother would say, I just can't hit the I believe button. So, just left of the Temple of Courage, there's some pegs you can use to tightrope across to get this Courage gem inside the chest. 
And the reason I was ranting about that previous puzzle is because I bet you that a lot of people are confused by that puzzle too, and so I, I doubt I'm the only one. It just doesn't feel very logical to me. So I'm assuming that it's going to be one of those things that people are going to be looking at this video to find out because uh, they're stumped about it as well. And it also just, like, doesn't feel logical for the items that I have available to me. Like, uh, just arrows, I would, wouldn't think they would break large wooden objects, I guess. It just isn't, like, what I would associate with it. So fun fact for you too, by the way, so you can tell if an arrow is used to hunt game or if it's used for wartime to fight people uh, based on the orientation of the tip. When hunting game such as deer or buffalo or bears or whatever, they're on their side and so they're four-legged and they're on their side and so their ribs are actually vertical. So you need to use arrows where the arrowheads are vertical as well. So the idea is that it will slide in between the ribs and that is why arrows are designed the way they are. If you have a horizontal arrowhead instead, it will bonk into the ribs. Meanwhile, if it's vertical like that, what happens is even if it hits the rib itself, it'll deflect a little bit and it'll still slide in between the ribs and that is the idea. When you're using arrows, you aim for the chest and that way it slides in between the ribs and it actually makes it really hard to get out because of the way the arrowhead is designed because it has those sharp points to either side. If you try and pull it back out, it actually catches on the ribs and you can't get the arrow out very easily. Um, and this makes it so that it gets snagged and it can actually cause more damage, which makes it very damaging. So likewise for people though, because humans are standing upright, their ribs are instead horizontal. So horizontal arrowheads are used instead during wartime. I find that all very fascinating, but I just explained the mechanics of that so that you can understand the concept that arrows are piercing weapons. They are not blunt, they don't smash things. Like barrels. <laughs> you can't smash a barrel with an arrow, it doesn't work that way. <laughs> I realize it's a video game, I know, I'm just, I'm just ranting. Next over on Bannon Island, we have a treasure chest that is on a small island just to the far south. So go ahead and grapple to that, which is great, gives you a power gem. And then continue on north. Now, earlier in this video, I talked with a gossip stone that said that there was something buried just south of the old wayfarer's doorway. So go ahead and dig up around there and you'll find a treasure map. Sweet! Now, if you knew that this was here, you could have technically dug this up earlier. I debated about it, but at the same time, like, we had, we're coming back here for other things. So I just figured I'd include it all in the same video because it'd be kind of cool. Um, anyways, continue on to the right, and instead now there's a bunch of stuff over through the cave. Now this is the area that leads to the cannon game, which you can do as well. This is, leads to a bomb bag upgrade. I did this as soon as we had access to bombs, so I actually already have this bomb bag upgrade. Up ahead we have some pegs. Unfortunately the one across the way is too close to the water's edge so you can't grapple to it. So instead you want to make a tightrope so you can get across. So do so, and the two chests contain a Courage Gem and a Big Green Rupee, which is awesome. Something I think is interesting is any object that is grappleable, is that even a word? You can grapple to another object that is also grappleable. So you can do it on, on these two chests, which I think is interesting, so you can, there's nothing you can do with them. It doesn't serve any purpose, but I just think it's interesting. Um, I also, I think you can go ahead and grapple a chest to a peg, and I think you could even tightrope across the peg. So you get on the peg and then get on top of the rope that is connected to a chest, I think. You wouldn't be able to step on the chest itself, of course, but... Um, I'm just interested to see what that happened. I didn't think to test that in this particular recording, so if anybody knows in the comments, let me know. If you slingshot off to the far left, you'll see a bunch of tablets, and this one on the very far left has a sec secret little hint. It says that you can dig up treasure between the two chests. Hmm. Grapple back to the right and dig in between the two chests to find a treasure map. That's all we had to do here, so our last objective is to go to Uncharted Island, and that is the island that is just south of Bannon Island, which is where we are now. So just sail due south and you'll find that island, and if you haven't discovered it yet, I would feel very sad for you because Cold and Frogs and Cyclone Slate is a necessity for playing this game, I think. It's just, it would be so awkward to play this game without being able to teleport around the sea. Next, on Uncharted Island, there is a treasure that was buried just south of the eye, and I actually uncovered that in a previous video, but I'm just pointing it out in case you haven't done that yet, so do that. And then off to the right, there is a central cave, so go ahead and enter, and there was an upper ledge that I mentioned earlier, there was a chest that we couldn't get because we didn't have the appropriate items. But now we do! So go ahead and you can either grapple back and forth, that particular peg is a little bit too close, so you can either make a tightrope to get across, or you can grapple straight to the chest, and this will allow you to get a Courage Gem. To get back, you can either just grapple to the southern chest because it's far enough away from the edge that you can do that, or you can tightrope across, or you can just fall down and go up the stairs. But either way, all those options work. And now it's time for sunken treasure. Sunken treasure time! We're gonna go ahead and do that. And uh, there's three pieces that we can get right now if you've been following along with me. And I think all these are actually worth about 800 rupees in my game. I'm curious to see if there's actually some variety as for, well, I, they, they have to be. Like I know people have gotten like golden ship parts from some of them, I think. 
So I'm curious to see if like there's uh, some commonality between this. If you guys could let me know in the comments if the value of the treasure is different than uh, than what you guys are getting. So I know the demon parts, for example, are worth 800 for me. So if you guys are getting some that are worth 1,500, I'd like to know. If you could let me know in the comments, that'd be, that'd be wonderful. So once you're done collecting all that, it's time to head back to the Temple of the Ocean King. Well, I will actually do that in the next video. There's just so much collection-y stuff. I had to have a video just dedicated just to that. You know, it's always sort of a weird thing in walkthroughs. You always have a couple videos that are like the collection chapters, and they're always kind of weird to like wrap my mind around like what is the most efficient way to do this <laughs> and do it in a way that's like convenient for the player like i like to not necessarily get things as soon as they're available per se but whenever it's convenient or like get a whole bunch of stuff all at once so that are in the same general areas you know you know i know you've been thinking to yourself you're like i need a little more epic in my life but i'm not sure how to get it but have i got a deal for you i have the solution right here you see it's called this little red button called subscribe so you click that button and all kinds of epic things happen in your life from then on it's amazing it's life-changing so in fact there's even two of those buttons so it can be twice as epic you see because you can subscribe to zelda dungeon you can also subscribe to my personal channel caleb simpson over there so i have links to all that stuff in the description all of our various socials and such you should check those out to have even more epic in your life i've got your back guys i'm thinking of you so thank you guys for watching. Join me for the next video where we will continue on towards the Temple of the Ocean King.